Welcome to our 2018 faculty in service. As you can see, we've got a different setup today. Our goal is to equip you in what you need as far as our online distance education in Canvas goes. So because we've heard so many questions over the, the last couple of months since our last in-service about uh, questions in Canvas, uh, how to do some of the basics in getting started, to some more uh, advanced techniques like uh, testing online and considerations there and using modules. What we've decided to do today is to create a structure for you designed to give you answers to your questions. So we've broken up into three groups and you'll hear from um, a faculty member on some ideas for Canvas and then you'll have some work time at the end to be able to um, work on your actual uh, Canvas sites, applying the information that you just learned, but also to be able to ask one-on-one -on -one questions and get help right then on things that you need. So you're going to rotate through and hear three different techniques on Canvas today, building off of some things that you know. But the whole vision for this entire process is based on this right here. So when we're doing online education, this is our, our, our foundation. We believe that students learn best when they're actively engaged in these three things. Number one, they have to in, be engaged with you, the instructor. There's a big chunk of interaction missing when you have a distance student. You as the professor and uh, they as the student, you do not have a face-to-face -face interaction. So you need to do things in your Canvas course to increase the interaction between you and the student so that they can learn better and therefore um, appreciate the class more and uh, that also helps with our retention. Not only do they need to interact with you more, but they need to interact with your content more. More than just listening to the lectures and watching the videos, maybe doing some assignments, but using collaborative tools, uh, doing other techniques, interacting with materials online and exploration and reflection. There are many different techniques to help with these three things, but they need to interact with your content more. What does that look like in today's world? We'll talk a little bit about that in your workshops. And then finally, how do they, we get our students to interact with other students in our physical classroom and other online students as well? These three considerations are things that you need to be thinking about to help your students distance, and of course the ones who are in your face-to-face -face classroom also using Canvas, you need to consider this to help them be more actively engaged and that's how they're going to learn and that's how we're going to present ourselves as professionals in online Christian education. How do you get started in that? Especially if you're new to Canvas or if you're confused about different elements in Canvas or um, if you're just starting at the very basics. Here's some keys to succeed to help you. First, you got to start. I started with zero knowledge of Canvas a couple semesters ago when we started. Many of you are in that same boat. You got to start. I didn't want to start. I'll be honest with you. I didn't want to start. But the more that I do it, the easier it does get. So even if you're starting at the very basics, you got to start. But related to that, you got to start small. For me, what that looked like, very first semester, I posted my Canvas or my syllabus on Canvas, and that was it. That went pretty well. So then the next time around I had syllabus and then other handouts that I presented to my students digitally. And then importing that content from um, class to class really helped. I had that foundation of all of my documents. I said, I'm gonna do some of my assignments online this next semester and some of them will be handed in um, in physical copies. And then after that, it was easier to add in. All of my assignments are now online. And now I'm starting to experiment with more advanced techniques like home pages and module organization. And so if you do small incremental changes, that will help you actually go faster in the long run because you just have small things that you're learning over time, which will then build you the momentum. So start small. Next, you do need to experiment with new things. Okay, so, so experiment, try new things, even if they don't work. I've tried some things on Canvas that were kind of epic failures. Um, but if I didn't have that and the feedback from my students, like, no, Mr. Crank, this did not work, 
I would not have known. So you got to experiment, make small changes as you go, and then learn to adapt. This technology, the things you're learning today, is going to change tomorrow. Not literally tomorrow, but very soon, because technology changes so fast. So we need to be in the habit of constantly refreshing our knowledge um, as professionals in the field. What's the research that's being done out there? How do I use these tools? And how is that changing to stay ahead and keep up? All right? Now, if you're just getting started, what are some of the very basics that you should do? You should learn how to create a home page. Now, in my workshop today, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. I talked in great detail about home pages in the fall in service. So if you need that video, let me know and I'll make sure that you get that. You need to upload your syllabus online, definitely. You need to decide on a course structure. I'm going to talk about three different ways you can organize your course today in my module, in my workshop. So you'll be able to, to understand what that means. And then you need to do assignments online. And then, of course, don't forget to publish your class um, once you're finished. All right. And remember, you need to publish your courses when the syllabi are due. All right. That's it for now. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn it over to your workshop leaders.